Almost six years after the reference edition RX480 model has the opportunity to prove its value inside my benchmarking arena. The goal is to reach the highest frames per second while keeping satisfying image quality. Bear in mind that even though you might own a different AMD graphics card, the context and the suggested configurations of this video are applicable to every AMD GPU. To follow through easier the wall content, I will separate it into three parts. The first part will present the specifications of the hardware and software we'll use to run the benchmarks complementing with a very quick Windows and AMD Adrenal software optimization to make the overall gaming experience a bit smoother. The second part contains all the different Fortnite's in-game settings. I'm going to deep dive into the various configurations, exploring the best possible options and at the end showcasing the most optimal Fortnite video settings for your RX480 GPU. After that, I will reveal two unofficial FSR applications along with some further boosting tricks to maximize the total frames per second. In the third and last part, I will talk about the final results and the overall experience I had while testing the Sapphire RX480 using the Fortnite as benchmarking tool. The present content holds an awful amount of information and lots of numbers for you to absorb, which took me a great deal of time and plenty of research to gather up and present to you as best as I could, so I really hope you enjoy every minute of it. If, by the way, you are against the clock and you don't want to go to the entire content in order to obtain the required data that will let your graphics card reach the maximum frames per second, check the timestamps of the video timeline or the description below and jump into the summarizing results without any further delays. For the rest of my amazing viewers that are going to stick with me until the end of the story, let me introduce you my benchmarking system. Beginning with the motherboard. An MSI B450M mortar accompanied by AMD's Ryzen 7 1700 processor overclocked at 3.7 GHz to mitigate as much as possible any CPU bottleneck. The 32GB of 3200MHz DDR4 memory will be plenty for the task, and the 650W power supply unit can provide more than enough power for our components. For storage, I use 1TB Western Digital Blue NVMe M.2 drive that hosts a fresh installed copy of Windows 10 version 21H2 and all the necessary software to complete the tests. A 27-inch 1080 max resolution and a 60Hz refresh rate will be the main display monitor, which provides a typical resolution that almost 70% of gamers are using according to Steam's hardware survey of April 2022. In case that you have a monitor capable for higher frequencies, choose the highest possible refresh rate. To ensure that no other procedure will interfere with the testing results, I use a second computer to record and an Elgato external USB device to capture the gameplay footage. The final video output is the result of 1080 30fps MP4 file. The graphics card has installed the latest AMD drivers. To check out if you have the most updated drivers, open the AMD Adrenaline software, go to Settings, and on System tab, take a look at the driver status. Keep in mind that maintaining your computer system with the latest drivers and software updates is mandatory if you want a secure and well-functioning gaming PC. To make sure that Fortnite will perform 100% under Windows 10, go to the search box and type Game Mode Settings. Select the corresponding setting. On the popped window, be sure that the Game Mode selection is enabled. On the right menu, click on Xbox Game Bar. Disable the Game Bar function. Now click on Captures and turn off both the background and the audio recording. Back to the search box, type Graphics Settings. Tap on the corresponding field. Now click on Browse button and use the file path which appears on your screen. Your goal is to find and select Fortnite's executable file named Fortnite Client Win 64 Shipping. Then Press the Add button. Now click on the new appeared Fortnite menu and then go to Options. On the new window, select High Performance and press Save. Go again to the search box and type Power Plan. Open the corresponding setting. On the new window, click on Change Advanced Power Settings. Click on PCI Express, on Link State Power Management, select OV. 
Now go on the processor power management and make sure that both the minimum as well as maximum processor state is 100% and the system cooling policy is active. Press apply and go for one last time to the search box and type advanced system settings. On the pop-up window, press the performance settings button. Choose the adjust for best performance and then press apply. There are plenty more Windows 10 configurations that you can play with, but this is not the scope of the current content. If you care to know more about Windows debloating and optimization, check the corresponding links in the description below. As far as AMD's Adrenaline software, Epic Games doesn't give AMD the same preferential treatment as it does with Nvidia. So, the offered options to boost Fortnite through AMD's application are limited to none. Thus, it is best to keep everything on default settings. Bro Science advocates that it might be beneficial to activate the Adilac option, but I haven't seen any tangible benefit while playing Fortnite with that enabled, so it is up to you if you activate it or not. One more thing. Before I move into the next part of this content and before the script gets completely out of hand, it is important, especially for my new viewers, to talk to the hand. To measure the performance of RX480, I'm going to use two software tools, the MSI Afterburn combined with Riva Tuner Server. Most of the benchmarking footage will include a layout with numbers at the top left corner of the screen. For your comfort, every time I'm going to refer on a specific element of MSI's layout, I will also highlight it so it will be easier for you to comprehend the benchmarking narration. General rule of thumb, the higher the frames per second and the lower the frame time, the better the gameplay experience. Now that we're done with the benchmark methodology, it is time to proceed with the nuts and bolts of this video. The benchmarking tests. My primary goal is to make the Sapphire RX 480 reach the highest frame rate possible without breaking the gameplay graphics. The visual optimization is irrelevant for the competitive fast-paced esports games similar to Fortnite, so the settings that trade performance for aesthetics will be turned off or set to low. Most Fortnite players call this type of game setup Pro Settings. For both mine and your convenience, I will separate the video settings into those which will remain constant during the benchmark procedure and those which will change. The former settings will be full screen, window mode at 1080 resolution and frame rate at unlimited. Everything inside the graphics sub-menu will remain unchangeable. The 3D resolution will stay 100%. The V-Sync, Show FPS and Motion Blur will be turned off. Allowing multi-third rendering is a must if you play on a processor with more than one CPU cores. GPU crash debugging is uneasy, thus set it to off. The remaining video settings and more specific the view distance, shadows, anti-aliasing, textures, auto-download, high resolution textures and high resolution texture reminders, effects and post-processing, as well as the rendering APIs DirectX 11, DirectX 12 and performance mode, are the ones that I'm going to experiment with in order to find a good balance between high performance and acceptable looking graphics. At the moment being, all these settings will be turned off or switched to low using this setup as the base configuration to begin the tests. Since a journey of 1000 miles begins with a single step, our little venture began comparing the three rendering APIs DirectX 11, DirectX 12 and Performance Mode taking a walk on Battle Lab Mode. To avoid creating inconsistent results, I ran the same path multiplied times in order to create a control environment with as few variables as possible. Out of the three API modes, Performance Mode was the fastest with the MSI layout reading 223 average frames per second and very low frame times. Low frame times had also the better looking Direct X12 and even though it came second at average frames, it had the highest 1% low outplaying the performance mode by 42 frames. 
That is a huge 38% difference, which gives on this round the win to DirectX 12. DirectX 11 came short both at average and on pressure low. Especially the 1% low dropped below the minimum 60 cap, indicating that at more strenuous scenarios, the gameplay will be very stuttery. Speaking about strenuous, here it is the unofficial 490 degrade benchmark made by Dewey Rouge. This is a very demanding test, integrating a combination of high number of objects, rendering textures with multiply lighting effects and shadows. Exactly everything I need to make the life of RX 480 miserable. This time, DirectX 12 was by hair's breadth the overall winner, achieving 159 and 89 at average and on person low respectively. A bit behind came performance mode with 155 and 88 FPS. Last and flast was again DirectX 11. Despite the decent one percent low, it couldn't deliver great numbers at average FPS, being 20% short against the competition. By now, it was obvious that DirectX 11 was like the chaff among the wheat, and I had to remove it so I could focus exclusively on DirectX 12 and performance mode. I was a bit surprised by the so far results, since usually it is the performance mode that renders higher frame rates. This rule applies for each test I have done so far using Nvidia's graphics cards to run Fortnite. However, using AMD's RX 480 chipset, it is DirectX 12 that decisively takes the lead so far. It is curiosity that motivates my need for knowledge or drives me crazy, thus I couldn't resist the urge of experimenting with the video settings of Fortnite to find out how much of performance impact I would have. So I loaded again the Battle Lab mode, picked DirectX 12 as my first lab rat and messed around with the view distance options to discover a very weird bug. Usually higher distance levels increase the overall workload on both CPU and GPU, resulting in low frame rates as more models and objects appear in the background. But what we see here is something that Fortnite developers should do something about it. Even though near settings offer higher average FPS, it is 30% lower at 1% low compared to medium, far and epic. Moreover, there is zero performance and visual difference between the medium, far and epic. This means that your view distance options should be anything else than near, otherwise for reasons your gameplay will suffer at the very crucial 1% low FPS. The shadow settings gave the expected results. When this being disabled, produced the highest frames overall and the epic being the heaviest of all. Beyond the performance impact enabling this future can also affect negatively your gameplay, since shadows are casting obscure shapes on the battlefield where enemies can spot you while staying unseen hiding, where else in the shadows. Thus, turning off this feature is the wisest choice. Anti-aliasing is another feature that should be relevant for competitive Fortnite players. Obviously, with this setting off, I got higher FPS as opposed to the rest of the settings. Medium settings are considerably light. Still, the visual difference between off and medium are almost unnoticeable, so I opted for the former. Textures is one more intensive feature that drops significantly the overall FPS without offering substantial graphical fidelity. The obvious pick here is the low textures that is 14, 16 and 21% faster than medium, high and epic settings respectively. Here are two options that plenty players underestimate the negative impact that has on their gaming PC. Both auto-download high resolution textures and high resolution textures reminders, if turned on, will use a significant space on your storage device and they will drop massively the 1% low frame rate. Testing side by side on and off options resulted similar average slightly lower frame time, but 23 more frames per second at 1% low whenever these two features were disabled. Different effect levels definitely deliver more eye catchy and exciting visuals, but at a huge cost. A comparison between low and epic levels demonstrates perfectly the above statement. Medium settings was the closest in performance compared to low, being 23 frames short on average and somewhat similar to 1% low. Low is again the best recommendation. Similar to view distance, the post-processing feature gave some broken results. This time, whenever I chose medium settings, the overall frames began to drop constantly until they hit bottom rock. Not sure if this problem is caused only with AMD's RX 480 or if it occurs on every AMD GPU. 
to make matters even worse, the high and epic settings were rendering some very blurry images in the distant field view. Thus, low was the only viable option that didn't break the game and offered high and stable frame rates. Unlike DirectX 12, performance mode didn't present any weird bugs. Near view distance gave the highest frames with 273 and 172 average 100% low. Medium, far and epic gave similar results, dropping the performance by a whopping 27%. Still, comparing DirectX 12 with Performance Mode, the former was the winner because gave higher 1% low, and this is the main factor that keeps the game smooth even under the most demanding situations. Textures produce the expected results, with high and epic settings being the more taxing of the bands. Medium was only 1% slower compared to low settings, but with a noticeable difference in the graphics quality. The comparison of DirectX 12 low textures against performance mode medium textures gave this time a clear winner, with the latter being the faster one, but the difference in quality between those two modes was like night and day. Last but not least, Messes doesn't interfere greatly with Fortnite's frame rates, resulting almost identical numbers with similar quality on both low and high configuration. Taking into account the above data, I could safely choose the best possible settings for my Sapphire X480 graphics card. The standard 1080 resolution at full screen mode, it is a very common setup for any GNU low budget gamer. The frame rate will set to unlimited, otherwise we cancel the whole purpose of this video. The graphics submenu will remain unsensible. You should keep in mind that these settings cannot affect the frame rate, therefore your settings here are dependent on your monitor as well as your own individual preferences. The 3D resolution should be 100% to keep the picture quality at decent levels. There are some exceptions to this rule, more about this later. You want to keep the view distance at medium for DirectX 12 and low in performance. Shadows and IT aliasing settings should be kept off. The textures at low. Both auto download high resolution textures and high resolution textures reminders off. Meshes can be low or high since they don't seem to have any visual or performance difference, at least under the current patch update. The effects and post processing settings are set to low. Vsync, Show FPS, and Motion Blur set to off. Multithread rendering should be on to take advantage of the extra cores of the modern CPUs. And finally, GPU crash debugging turned off. And with that, you might think that this long benchmarking torture finally reached to its end, but obviously, I wasn't quite done yet. Now that I had found the optimal video settings, it was time for... One last In this final comparison between DirectX 12 and Performance Mode, I implement some unofficial FSR magic tricks, experimenting with two different software tools. The first is called Looseless scaling, and you can find it to Steam for cheap but not free. It includes both scaling and sharpening techniques. The other is free, called Magpie, and it doesn't offer sharpening features, but is free and combined with AMD's Adrenal software can do some sharpening in the game. On a side by side comparison with FSR enabled at 720 window mode, scalable to 1080 resolution and 50% sharpening, the performance mode was faster by 3% on average, but the DirectX 12 was better by 30% on 1% low. In my mind, the 1% low marker is always more crucial than the average and the overall frames per second, since it guarantees more stable gameplay without sudden stutters, and I will always trade 7 lousy frames for a smoother game experience. The truth is, I wasn't pressed at all by the performance of both FSR software. So I made one more comparison attempt, but this time at native 1080 and the 3D resolution at 80%. Once more, DirectX 12 was the better API with a huge difference of 49% at 1% low. 
If you are interested to know how all this translates into real gameplay conditions, here it is the DirectX 12 in action under the very demanding Rumble game mode. With FSR enabled at 720 window mode, scalable to 1080 resolution and 50% sharpening, I got 196 and 62 average and aperture low frames per second respectively. Performance mode on the same settings brought a decent average of 201 FPS, but it was 20 FPS below the mandatory 60 cap at 1% low. Again, these unofficial FSR implementations are not impressive at all. Even playing with sharpening values, the video quality on both DirectX 12 and performance mode was too nasty for my taste. So here it is my suggestion with a bulletproof setting that is well balanced between the highest possible frames per second and the minimum acceptable graphical fidelity. DirectX 12, neutral, 1080 and 80% 3D resolution. On the cutthroating rubble mode reached 165 and 79 average and 1% low FPS respectively offering a smooth and generally a quite joyful gameplay experience. Overall, I can't say that the results were disappointing, but it wasn't incredible either. I expected something way more on average frames per second from Sapphire X480. It is obvious that while Fortnite supports NVIDIA implementations like Reflex Low Latency, it doesn't show the same collaboration with AMD team. The absence of official FSR factions is a clear sign of this. There was also a bunch of annoying bugs that I can't say with certainty if this occurs because the RX480 chipset or is a general anomaly for all AMD's GPUs. On the other hand, RX480 it is and it will continue to be for many years a pretty sufficient graphics card for the people who like to spend their time playing games like Fortnite or similar fast-paced esports titles. To that note, my upcoming video will check out how RX480 holds in 2020, testing the card this time with more demanding gaming titles. Until then, take care, farewell, goodbye, see you in a while.